Hi, Quinvis here, member of the Free Plain user community. Uh, this is the another in a continuing series of short videos designed to highlight features that are available within Free Plain um, for purposes of bringing primarily people that are new to the platform up to speed, shorten their learning curve. Free Plain is a is a open source, free, yes, free. Uh, platform independent mind mapping program. Actually it's much more than just mind mapping now. It has, it has developed a, such a rich feature set that uh, it is really more about information management. Uh, as you'll see from other videos that have been produced in the series, there are all kinds of capacities to capture and reference information. I find it to be one of the, one of the tools I go to every day uh, to help me not only think through uh, green light ideas and to sort them into some order, but to then to research and capture information related to those ideas so that everything uh, naturally flows through a process and at the end I have all the information I have about this in one place. There isn't another application uh, that I'm aware of that does this for this price. So uh, if you haven't uh, become a member of the free plane user community feel free to stop by at sourceforge.net <clears throat> search for free plane and uh, join the community the discussion there is lively there are lots of folks that are very very knowledgeable about uh, capabilities within the platform and if you don't can't find what you're looking for simply ask a question and those folks are always happy to be of service they're incredibly bright people involved in actively managing <clears throat> this uh, this product. As I said, the purpose of this video is to talk a little bit about summary nodes. Now, summary nodes are unique uh, to my experience in mind mapping. They do what other mind maps may offer in other ways, but for free plane, this without a knowledge of summary nodes, you're missing an incredibly powerful way to summarize data within a greater list. I've got an example here. You see a number of animals listed, and I've sorted them away. You've got from bobcat up are members of the cat family, and from mastiff up to wolf are members of the dog family. Um, some people have made use of clouds. Let's see, format cloud, and let's say we'll just make it a rectangle. You see, I've created a box around this list, which is the parent and all of its children. But clouds don't really give me a way to distinguish between members of this list. The cloud identifies this list from others uh, that are elsewhere in the map, but it doesn't give me any ability to distinguish within submembers of that list. Um, I'm going to eliminate that. So let's see now, I've got this list here, uh, from here to here, and I want to distinguish it from the others. Well, one way, obviously, is to just separate them um, from, the, from the others. And now I have a list here that's separated from the bottom list, but th there's no way to tell the reader or remind myself later why I separated them. So some labeling is required. Well, some people could actually put a label up here and in a different font, write cats, and up here maybe write dogs. Um, per perhaps change the color um, so that I, I can identify that it's a label. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Where is, oh, here it is. We'll make it yellow. And we'll make this light green. So now I have a label of sorts, and I've gone, I've identified um, that these are somehow subsets of this cat, and these are subsets of this dog, even though they visually appear as equals, as siblings. So other people have come up with the idea of maybe taking a floating node out here and label it as cats and another one out here and label it as dogs. So I now have a way to identify 
that this list is cats, or maybe I could put it up above uh, like this. That's another way I could do it. But you see, all this is very, uh, uh, well, you're just having to clue things together in order to make that happen. Let me show you a different approach. I'll delete these. And it involves using summary nodes. And what I have, I've done the same thing, but I've inserted another node down here, which is Felidae, which is the cat family, and another node down here called Canidae, which is the dog family in Latin. And um, by simply right-clicking and selecting Summary Node Set, I now have created a very special node here. That we start, started out as a sibling to the others, but by designating it as a Summary Node, it now is associated with this curly bracket, and all of the siblings above it are identified as part of the curly bracket. Same thing down here. If I take Canada and say Summary Node, now I have two sets of nodes that have clearly labeled the sub-elements of this list. So that at some point in the future I come back to this map, or if I share this map with others, it's very clear how these children of this list are different from these children in that list. And what's really wonderful about summary nodes is they have all of the capacity of any other node within a map. So I can append children to the summary nodes and grandchildren if I wish. I can establish links that are associated with those summaries. So now instead of an awkward arrangement, a title of, you know, how somehow how this list is represents cats or dogs, I've now supplied a tremendous amount of information that I may have discovered in research that tells me about the characteristics of this list and I've associated, I've embedded a link associated with the summary node that when clicked takes me to uh, a Wikipedia article on Felidae uh, and allows me then to have access to all the information uh, that might be uh, relevant to that list that I, that I just created. Same thing with Canada. When I click on that, I, I go to a, a Wikipedia page. And in that list are you know, the pertinent information about dogs. So I could, if I choose, um, assign a, I think I actually have a, I have a special, oops. I have a special uh, format style that I've created for summaries, which also then help me see um, that this is a summary. It identifies it by a unique color and makes the map more attractive and interesting to the eye. Um, I can close these up. And now when I come back to my list at some point in the future, I now see clearly that there were, there are, even though these are all animals, some of them in this list are different than others. I can easily insert additional uh, characteristics here. Just put house cat in here and put in here uh, So I can add to the list and keep the designations that I have for summaries. So that gives you a hint of how summary nodes work. If you have any questions, I'm out on the web. Don't hesitate to ask, and me or someone else will be happy to answer your questions. But I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, we'll talk later out there. Thanks.